thanks everyone. So I'm really proud to be here today representing Tolman and um, Australia. And thank you especially Peter Tuttle for your trust in um, presenting your brainchild. So Peter Tuttle is a professor of astrophysics and the principal investigator of the Tolman mission. Um, we also have more of our team here. So Chris Betters, our project engineering manager, Fred Cruz, Connor Langford, our engineers, Max Charles, Louis de Duart, um, Connery Deegan, and Ben Pope, um, PhD students, except Ben, who is a postdoc. So these are the people who have done the hard work of the um, Toleman mission, and I'm really pleased to be able to present it. So Toleman stands for Telescope for Orbit Locus Interferometric Monitoring of our Astronomical Neighborhood. I understand in the US you call that a $4 word. Um, Toleman is going to search for an Earth analog in Alpha Sen. So what that means is we're looking for something about Earth mass with a half to two year orbit, um, and it might be around Alpha Sen A or B. Um, Toleman is going to be Australia's largest space telescope to date. And certainly for astronomy, we don't know what Defence is doing, but let's just say it's going to be our largest space telescope. Um, it's going to be a 16 U CubeSat to be launched in 550 kilometres sun-synchronous orbit with a target launch for mid next year. Um, the telescope is underway, built by Aperture Optical Sciences. Um, and due at the end of the year. Similarly, the spacecraft is underway, built by Endurosat. We just had our PDR and we're going to assemble late um, this year as well. Our primary funding is from Breakthrough Watch, so thank you very much to Breakthrough for enabling this mission. Um, and we've also received um, additional funding from the ARC linkage grant and recently just won another grant for um, integration with the Spiral Blue payload computer, which I'll tell you a little bit more about late in this presentation. So Toleman is going to plan for our interstellar journey to Alpha Sen A or B by actually finding whether or not there is a planet worth visiting there before we invest the money to go there. Um, so this is a nice video of our journey. Alpha Sen system is one of the brightest um, systems in our night sky along with the Southern Cross, but that's not because it is exceptionally bright, but actually because it's exceptionally close. So its distance is about 1.3 parsecs. Um, so if there is a planet in Alpha Centauri A or B, it would cause its host star to wobble because of gravitational forces. The wobble is detectable when we track the separation between the binary star systems, but the wobble signal of a Earth-like planet around Alpha Cent is also extremely small. And this signal is actually smaller than an atom on our detector. So this is a detector um, full image of our point source. If we zoom in about a thousand times, we see the image of a pixel. If we zoom in again about a hundred times, we see um, the wafer of silicon. And if we zoom in again, we see the silicon atoms. The signal that we're looking for is about the size of that red dot. It's tiny, it's about 10 to the negative six order of magnitude. So at this um, order of magnitude, Everything is critical. Um, so, wait, let me go back. That's a teaser. <laughs> um, at this order of magnitude, everything is critical and we can't allow for distortions to affect our measurements. So this is an example uh, featuring Kieran Grattan uh, at our Toleman workshop in Sydney. If we wanted to measure Kieran's um, image, we could do it through a mirror by placing a ruler up against the mirror to measure his height. But if the mirror distorts, um, in this method, we would not be able to accurately read his height. However, if we ask Kieran to hold the ruler, um, the measurement would not be distorted <laughs> by um, any sort of, dis the measurement would not be affected by distortions of the mirror. That's a concept that we implement with Toleman. So, um, on the left-hand side, we also have two point sources, but the distance between these point sources, Alpha Sen A and B, changes when the telescope deforms during orbit, which it inevitably will do. So we won't be able to measure the separation of 10 to the negative six um, with this method. However, when we fly um, Toleman's diffractive pupil as our ruler within the system, the separation measurement is immune to telescope distortions. So what is the pupil? Um, 
the pupil is a diff diffractive grating that is going to be engraved on the front plate of the telescope. It has this log harmonic pattern, um, which indicates a half wave phase shift between black and white. When we um, superimpose or create the product of these three patterns, we get this um, composite diffractive pupil pattern, which is actually more effective at spreading energy of the point source um, over a larger point spread function region. So we started with this concept of the diffractive pupil, and Louis, who's here today, um, has done some optimization work on this original diffractive pupil using his original software Deluxe to um, create a point spread function which has a light spread which is strongly confined with very even pattern peaks and is an excellent diffractive ruler. So the key Ptolemy innovations are that the diffractive pupil removes most of the error terms that might arise from distortion, um, and the fundamental ruler element is something that is monolithic, thermally stable, and precisely monitored. The diffractive pupil um, naturally spreads the starlight over many pixels, which also prevents detector saturation, and at the same time gives major statistical benefits in beating down noise. But there is still a flaw. The ruler um, depends on the color of the starlight, which varies with the temperature cycling of the star. So how do we solve this? We can measure the wavelength of the starlight with a spectrometer by adding two sets of sinusoidal gratings. This gives us these fringes on the outside of the pupil, um, which indicates the color of the starlight. We can improve this by actually inverting the phase grating at each boundary line of the original diffractive pupil. And by physics magic, it concentrates the um, fringes into these, um, from a smear to more like a point or a slit. So this mission concept, the diffractive pupil, has actually flown before. It's flown in a CubeSat mission called TinyTOL, um, which was a three-unit CubeSat deployed from the ISS to LEO. Um, it was tested in the lab and created, mm, created these point spread functions, but unfortunately, Quava 1 had no contact after launch. Luckily, Peter also had the opportunity to fly a diffractive pupil aboard the James Webb telescope. And these are the results. So starting from the point sources of the um, starry night, we get this image, which has these snowflake um, point spread functions, which are kind of like Vincent van Gogh's starry night. So Ptolemy is a flagship observatory. Um, Ptolemy is it trying to achieve flagship observatory performance in a CubeSat platform, which comes with several practical challenges. Um, some of them being data handling and da downlink, data interference, pointing attitude stability and vibration, thermal control during orbit, and a very lean budget, which all affect our ability to extract this tiny, tiny signal. This is a brief overview of some of the challenges and how we've overcome them. So with the data handling and downlink, ideally we would want to track the separation with a high frame rate, such as taking a video. But this requires more data capacity than we can actually downlink um, to ground. Um, we wonder whether we can actually read the spectrometer data, so those fringes, on board to effectively crop the photo before downlink, and we can do this using the AI ML functions of the Spiral Blue Edge computer, um, which is a Sydney-based startup that we're partnering with now. We also have data interference from stellar activity, so for example, sunspots or um, other interference um, sources, which may make it look like the star is moving, um, but we need to confirm that that movement is actually caused by a planet. Um, we have measured the astrometric detail of the sun, and Connery has uh, demonstrated the feasibility of measuring the orbital inclination of nearby stars like Alpha Sen. And Connery, who is here, has asked you to ask him if you have any further questions about that. Um, in addition, the pointing attitude, um, stability, and vibration are integrally important to our mission. So telescope pointing is not going to be completely stable during orbit, while imaging, this is going to create a motion blur. 
We can simulate the motion blur and the effects on the measurements, um, which allows us to mitigate by including jitter in our modeling, but we can also improve the pointing accuracy in our engineering. So this is one example of how we've done that. We have um, a bespoke mechanical interface which has piezo actuators and a point, fine pointing control loop because we can't achieve a high enough pointing accuracy with the standard ADCS componentry on CubeSats. Um, similarly, for temperature control, in LEO, the temperature varies from negative 65 degrees to 125 degrees with the rounds of cycling depending on the orbital height. The spacecraft will also have internal heat generation from the battery and other heat sources, but the temperature changes will distort the optical instrument. And as I said, this is going to be pivotally important to our detection of the signal. So we have a low coefficient of thermal expansion glass ceramic for the front plate, which hosts the diffractive pupil or the ruler, but also a low coefficient of thermal expansion is not zero and everything matters at 10 to the negative six. So we're also mitigating distortions by implementing a bespoke PID controlled or responsive heaters. Um, finally, I'd just like to say that there are many other challenges that we're going to overcome in between now and next year, including some of the stuff around licensing for launch, practical challenges with budget. That's actually what I do. So um, I hope that I've done the rest of uh, the physics and engineering of this talk justice, but we do have our whole team here, thanks to the Breakthrough Foundation. Um, let's launch. Thanks.